Hello, everyone, and welcome to A Balanced Life with Dr. Jackie. I am so thrill that we are embarking on 2023 together and boy oh boy do we have some tips and tricks for you as we really try to figure out how do we go and get to where we believe we need to be each and every year we put so much thought into new year's resolutions new plans goals new planners and just really trying to map out what our lives need to look like Well, the reality is life happens. And oftentimes we do not get to those things that we start out in the new year. So whether you're working on a vision board, putting together a new calendar, being all creative and doing a scrapbook and using stickies and a host of other things that we often pull out in order for us to be able to plan our way forward. Today, we're gonna talk to our guests about what it means to really be your authentic self in this new year. What does that look like? How do you find him? or her, and then how do you move forward without other people changing you, trying to turn you in to something that they think you should be? Today, we are joined by our family strategist, Charlotte Avery, Pastor J.T. Johnson, our resident theologian and life coach, Dr. Tierney, our Level Up Life Coach, and Stacy Owens, our resident educator and all things balanced living. Hey, gang. Hey. Hey. Oh my goodness, it is so good to see everyone in this new year. And let me tell you, as things are getting started and we start to think about how we're going to move forward, I wanna ask you each this question, because I know we talk a little bit about what we put in our Balanced Living Toolkit. What is it that you are taking with you into this new year? What is it that you have learned about yourself through the pandemic, through the curves of all the things that we've had to overcome. What is it that you have brought with you into this new year that you believe is going to be a mainstay to keep you focused throughout the year? I'm gonna start with Pastor JT. Um, (laughs) I will say uh, for me, it's patience. Um, One of the things that I was guilty of was um, just running frantically. And um, during uh, the great pause or during quarantine, I really realized that I myself had become a hamster on his own created wheel. And last year, I really started to find a balanced, a balanced life, started to be able to give some no's and not feel guilty and really started to make some true movement But the thing that I had to learn was, is that with that, I have to give myself patience and patience enough to take one day at a time, step by step. And if we don't get it done today, know that if God gives us grace for tomorrow, he has given me another opportunity to take a stab at it again. So patience. Mm, Absolutely. What an excellent word to put into your toolkit. Stacey Owens, what about you? See, here I come coming behind him to just say, and I like that. I was going to say patience, but I'm also taking with me just being present. Um, for myself, I'm always looking down the road. Like I'm, I'm in the moment dealing with things, but while I'm in that moment, I almost look at it as if I have dominoes standing up in my life. So when I make this decision, if this domino falls, what is it going to impact? So I'm always looking down the road so much so that I will miss the part of the journey that is just happening on that day or in in that I'm being present in that moment. And so you lose yourself, you know, if you're, if you're not doing that because you're always chasing after the next thing. So at the end of the year, I started to focus more on just learning to live in the moment, learning to appreciate what was going on for me so that I can enjoy not just the journey, but find the enjoyment in what I, I am doing at that moment. And then um, I think I want to keep that. I want to I want to keep just living in the present moment so that I can make those connections for myself, because you got to have enjoyment as you're doing these things in life as well. Mm, Absolutely. I think that being present is a really great word to add into your toolkit, because as we stated, you know, many, many times before, you don't want to become guilty of comparing yourself with other people. You don't want to get in that space of being discouraged because you're not being present in the moment. Charlotte Avery, what say ye? Well, I'm just going to stick with all these P's that are going. And for me, I'm taking priority into the new year. Um, And I'm asking myself, what are 
the things that I'm really prioritizing. If it's not a priority, if it's not something, if it's just going to be something that's going to just keep me busy and not focused on what my priorities are and, and, you know, and just really like categorizing my priorities, you know, because, you know, making myself a priority, my family's been a priority, but this, this 2000, um, 23 is really going to be about me and my priorities. Not that I'm, you know, putting everybody else to the wayside, but really doing, you know, the deep work for me and accomplishing some things that I want to do for me um, that not, not necessarily entail, you know, my husband or my children, but things that are going to be a part of my personal growth. So I'm taking priority into the new year. Absolutely. Another great word to add to your to watching. Oftentimes they may find it difficult to really figure out where they need to land. And so as we're talking about patience and being present and having priorities, Dr. Tierney, what about you? So I was going to say um, I'm bringing naps. That's what I'm bringing. But <laughs> since my esteemed colleagues went with the P's, I'm going to stick with the P and I'm going to say practical practicality, being practical into this new year. So sometimes that may mean I just practically need to take a nap. You know, um, one thing that I've learned about myself is that I can get um, very big picture, you know, and you heard me say last episode that I'm very tenacious. So sometimes that tenacity um, and that big picture can run me into the ground because I'm looking at everything from 5,000 feet. And sometimes I just need to get real practical, real basics, you know, go back to the foundation. And that may mean, okay, I just need to take a nap. I don't have to go across the country. I just need to go and take a nap. You know, sometimes it just may mean that I need to have a conversation and not build this big strategy, you know, around this thing. So I'm bringing just the basics, just the being practical into the new year. So let me throw a monkey wrench into all of you guys' words because there is this distraction that oftentimes seems to come up. And as we're talking to our viewers about who they're going to be in 2023 and what their lives can look like, there are distractions that seem to come along, whether it's our family members, um, our coworkers, things that happen in the world. How do you balance dealing with distractions in order to keep from being discouraged as you take care of self in the new year. Now I'll go in the reverse order. Dr. Tierney, how are you managing, so, going to manage distractions in the new year? Uh, so the first thing is you have to recognize that it is a distraction. You know, a lot of times distractions become distractions because we don't know that it's a distraction. Yes, taking care of mama is important. Yes, doing this for your kids is vital. Yes, making sure that this project is done at work is critical you know, to your job. But when it becomes the main thing that you're focused on and you don't see anything else, you're not focusing on the other aspects of your life and that thing has your hyper-focus, it can become a distraction because you're no longer paying attention to your goals. You're no longer paying attention to practicing self-care for you. You're no longer making yourself a priority and being patient or being present or even just doing the things that are practical because you've become hyper-focused on this one thing. You know, a lot of times we don't see the distractions because we know the little distractions like watching TV or things like that, but it's the big distractions that are important that we tend to overlook. So the first thing is just recognizing the distractions when you see them. Oh, I want to piggyback off of that and ask Charlotte Avery the same yet a similar question um, when it relates to the distractions of rescue, because oftentimes people with children find themselves not being able to stay center focused and you're making yourself a priority. How are you planning on navigating the nuances of being a mom and a wife? So, you know, <laughs> this question is so good because my life is filled with distractions. Like, I mean, when school is in, I could be working on something and I get a call from school or I have to stop what I'm doing. And so one thing for me um, is that I really have to ask myself, what is this preventing me from accomplishing? especially when I'm taking priority into the new year. Because you know what? My children and my husband sometimes are famous for thinking that because I'm at home or because I'm working from home, that when they need something, because, you know, it's, and it's always an emergency, like their emergency is supposed to be my priority. And I've let them know, like, 
your emergency is not my problem unless it's like life or death, right? Like unless the house is burning down or you're you're dying, you know, you're it's not my it's not my fault that you forgot to do something or you forgot to take something. So one thing that is really exercising my voice and my power of no and saying, you know what, this is a distraction. I allotted, you know, a certain amount of time to get something done that it was a priority for me. And I have to ask myself, do I need to stop what I'm doing to focus on this person and their need? And and usually if that answer is no, and it's not life or death or anything like that, or, you know, then I'm just not, I'm just not doing it. And then the other thing is I've given myself time to really look at you know, even the distractions in the media, you know, social media, you know, can be an energy suck. And just so really prioritizing my time and putting myself on a, on a schedule of this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm not doing. I'm not searching social media and all of that. So, I mean, it, it can be hard because my I mean, with moms, I mean, everything can become a distraction. But you have to, like, ask yourself, is that a real distraction or is it just a dummy distraction? Mm-hmm. It's really interesting. When we come back after the break, I want to dialogue about this just a little bit more because we do get in that space of not being able to really determine what's a real distraction and then what's just taking out air and energy from what it is we need to be doing. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we're back after the break. Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! It's a real uh, revolutionary right now. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America. All the momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Welcome back everyone to A Balanced Life. And as you can tell, putting you on the priority list is extremely important. You have to be present. You wanna prioritize. You wanna make certain that you're exercising patience. But in addition to that, things need to be practical. But even in all of that, when you, you know what you need to do, you have a plan and a direction, there are distractions that have a tendency to come in and just really remove us from anything that looks like the plan that we had. I want to talk to Pastor JT about that for a moment because there are often times that our distractions aren't necessarily physical, mental, or emotional, but they're oftentimes spiritual. Pastor JT, talk to us about those spiritual distractions that really move us away from those things that we are purpose to be, our why, and what we are trying to accomplish in life. Wow. Great question, Dr. Jackie. It makes me think about um, the infamous scripture, so to speak, uh, from the Apostle Paul when he was talking to a group of brothers and sisters and he told them, he said, I have not attained it. He said, but one thing that I do, he said, I forget that which is behind me and I press forward. One of the things that I think that we look at, because again, me being a, a Baptist preacher, you know, we look at that press forward and we scream and we holler and, you know, that's a great jumping point. But I think that there are two points prior to that that I think answer your question. The first thing that he said is, his brothers and sisters, I have not attained it. So the first thing that he did was he got real with himself and he made it known. I'm going through the same thing that you all are going through. And I think that that kind of goes back to what Stacy was talking about, about those dominoes. And so, so many times we put ourselves so far in the future that we're not in this present moment. And present moments cause us to evaluate some things in our lives, some people, Uh, some nouns, some persons, some places and things. And so then when we start to look at it from a spiritual standpoint, um, I believe that the devil uses those nuances or those vices that he know that can easily get our attention. Because to be honest with you, if you hate okra, you're not going to be distracted with okra. Mm -hmm. But boy, if somebody loves German chocolate cake and every time Mm. you go over there, you know it's going to be there. And you have said no more sweets. That German chocolate cake is going to be there to tempt you. So that's what the devil does. The devil never tempts you with things that you don't like. 
because you don't need willpower then it's just not the palate that your tongue requires but then at that moment when you do see something that you really desire or something that you really want and that's how so many people end up in the wrong relationships because you went after what you wanted but it really wasn't what you needed so i think that knowing those nuances from a spiritual standpoint the devil is always going to come at us with things that at that moment we presently feel that we want and then in that once that want is fulfilled then we come out of it then logically now we open up because emotionally we were charged and emotionally we were led there's even a book that i'm actually reading now called emotional learning 2.0 and it talked about how things happen in our minds but we process it emotionally first and then we think about it logically so that's how a person can have an emotional outburst and then immediately like man why did i do that and it's only because our emotions are not in check so i'm just going all around the world to answer your question to tell you that one of the things that we may have to do more than anything is identify those things that could become a distraction just as dr tierney said and then now write those things on our prayer wall mm -hmm. and say god when those things come please allow me to be so present in the moment that i can control me and my space and not have me and my space dictated by the culprits that i have already identified as time robbers because one thing that's not going to happen when that time is stolen time is not going to come back and offer you a second chance Mm -hmm. I, I think that you bring up a very valid point because oftentimes those distractions lead to discouragement. And, and with that, it, it's in that space, you know, as all of you have stated, that we aren't able to keep up with our New Year's resolutions. And I know I've resolved many, many years ago that I'm not a New Year's resolution kind of person. Stacy, when you think about the things that have the tendency to get in the way of us being able to move forward, is it a good thing or not to make resolutions if you're not able to keep up with them? <laughs> Ooh, let's see. I'm not the person to ask about resolutions because I, I just, I don't do New Year's resolutions. Like I, I, I do that every, every day, every month throughout the year. I'm always newly creating something about myself. But um, I think when, when you have distractions come in or you have, um, things that's always deterring you from what you were working on. Um, I know I'm in that space myself right now. I, I love what um, Pastor JT just shared about uh, how you're tempted with the things that you love. And when you are a person like myself, who are, I'm a nurturer and I have a lot of people who are plugged into me. So it seems like right in the middle of my biggest projects and my biggest thoughts and my biggest dreams, everything falls apart for my children or for my family members. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. look to me to be the, the person to correct their issues and being the nurturer that I am, you know, in the past before I became present about this. I, I would always be hopping over to help somebody else. So now what I do is I like to just now that I have a better awareness of that, I like to tap in and, and take 30 seconds to ask myself, is this a problem that I can really solve? Or is this an issue that's really for me? Or is this something I just need to give 20 seconds to you to help you have a better thought about it so that you can go ahead on about your way? Um, but I definitely, after I delegate or reset them so that they can move on with their with their lives and not make it be my life to deal with, um, I don't come around and say, well, now that I missed this, let's make a new resolution to that. I, I just keep going to whatever my goals that I set for myself. I'm always working towards those goals. I'm always moving in that direction. And if something get me off track for the goal, I hurry up and determine, oh, wait, you're off track. Get back over here on your track or what you're supposed to be doing. And I continue to work to those goals. But I, I don't wait to the new year to set new goals or make resolutions. So, the research even shows when people make resolutions six months in, 46% of the people who set those resolutions are, are still working on them. So you can't be discouraged. So if you're always looking to how you can grow yourself, don't wait till one determined time to do it. Just continuously do it. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely valid. Dr. Tierney, talk to us about that for a moment, because often people come into a new year and they are literally beating themselves up because, oh, I didn't do it in 2020. And we know 2020 was just one of those years like all oh, everybody's plans, you know, went out the window. And then 2021 and 2022 gave us a semblance of hope. And now that we're in 2023, seemingly somewhat free and clear 
from things that could get in our way, we are still now teetering on should I or shouldn't I? Do I want to? Do I not want to? Help us understand and identify if we're going to level up in our lives. What does it look like to make a goal, a plan, a resolution and then stick to it? So whenever a new client comes to me and they're telling me what their goal is, the first question I ask them is why? Why is that your goal? Why is that something that you want to go after? And a lot of times I hear, well, because, you know, it's like, uh, well, and, and that's not a strong enough why. Your why has to make you cry in order for you to really stick to that thing and mm -hmm. do it when the going gets tough. If your why is because someone else is doing it or I just thought this would be a good idea. I saw it on Instagram or anything like that. You're not going to stick to it, which is why a lot of these New Year's resolutions, they fail. I completely agree with what Stacy just said. If your why is making you cry, it doesn't matter if it's January the 1st, June the 1st or March the 2nd. It doesn't matter. You will get started right then because you would not be able to go another moment without going after that thing. So that's one of the first questions that I ask people when they come to me to say, hey, here's my goal. Help me reach my goal. The second thing that we then begin to talk about, and I've said this before, is kind of who, who are you? You know, who, who, who are you? Because some of the things that we may be going after setting goals for may not even be connected to who we are. You know, I absolutely love the way that Beyonce is built, shaped. She's beautiful. That's not my ministry. That is not my body. I cannot sing like Beyonce. My body is not shaped like Beyonce. So why am I going to set a goal that I want to sing and dance? No, that's just that's just ludicrous, you know. But it's the same thing with our with the goals that we set in our lives. You know, if you know that the sight of blood makes you crazy, then why are we going after? you know, our degree to be, you know, a, a medical doctor or, you know, we have to be real with who we are before we can start outlining the goals of what we want to do. So that's kind of the one two punch when talking about entering into either the new year or whatever season that we want to go in, in terms of setting our goals and actually accomplishing them. Hmm, that's very interesting because when you were talking, I have to ask Charlotte this question because stick to itness is a part of the reason why, in addition to your why, people cannot sustain, attain, and maintain that New Year's resolution. Charlotte, what is the value in stick to itness? Being able to stick with something once you've, you know, made up your mind that that is where you need to be headed. When you can be laser focused and and you're really trying to get to the end goal i mean there is just so much joy and accomplishment met when i mean met and felt when you really stick to it and you do the hard work and and you say okay no i'm going to sacrifice this time so that i can be laser focused on doing this and you know i find i find that you know when i'm writing a new book or anything like that you know, it's always the the end goal. It's always, you know, what are, where am I trying to get to? How long am I how long am I going to try to keep doing this? You know, and so for me, it's, you know, setting boundaries and time limits and everything so that I can be focused and stick to where I'm going, because there's a level of fulfillment that you have when you say I did it. I accomplished this. I stuck to what I said I was going to do. And not only did I do it, but, you know, because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, it's really the God in me that helped me to get there. And so, you know, I mean, I just think that, you know, we all want to feel the pride of accomplishment and and really meeting our goals and our objectives and our projects. And so, you know, there's just so much reward emotionally, physically. I mean, I, I mean, I know that we have people with us in our in our group here who have written books and there's nothing like the accomplishment of saying I'm done. I did it. And that's what I always want to feel. And I always get an endorphin rush, you know, when I said, you know what, it is finished. I'm I'm done. And I just think everybody deserves and needs to feel that because once you felt it once and once you do it once, you can do it again. Mm. I think that that's an excellent segue as we go into the break. When we come back after the break, some people are assigned to us and some people are attached to us. And in the new year, it's important to know the difference. When we're back after the break, we're going to talk about who you with. 
We'll be back in a moment. Don't you think it's time to get wealthy? I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and my new show on the Black Star Network focuses on the things your financial advisor or bank isn't telling you. So watch Get Wealthy on the Black Star Network. Welcome back, everyone, to A Balanced Life. And oftentimes, who you with determines how far you can go. And I'm going to bring in Dr. Tierney to talk to us about that for just a moment. So, Dr. Tierney, there are people in our lives who are assigned to us, and there are people in our lives who are attached to us. Talk to us for a minute about being able to understand the difference and just how far it can take us if we make the right decision. Absolutely. Um, I believe that was Lil John and the East Side Boys um, who asked that question, who you with, who you with, who you with, get crunk, who you with. They were onto something because who you are with, who's going along this journey with you is vital. I literally dedicate an entire chapter in my book just to talk about this one topic. When you are with the right people who are assigned to you, that creates an iron sharpening effect. You're going to make them better. They're going to make you better. And the both of you together in partnership, relationship, community, whatever it is that that interaction is supposed to be, it's going to excel. But when you are just with people who are attached to you, they're riding your coattails, they're just there, just hanging on, they are sucking you dry. They are taking and distracting from your gifts, your talents. They are probably your biggest distractions, distractions right there. When we have people that may want to just go with us, but are not willing to help carry the weight and support the mantle that you have on your life and vice versa, you that you're carrying the one that they have on theirs, then that can be a catastrophe, seriously. Even in the professional sense, I tell people, I can tell just as good when somebody belongs to me. I don't say it at the beginning of our, you know, the free session that I give, you know, to my clients because it can kind of weird people out, but I can tell within the first 10 to 15 minutes of talking to somebody, if that person belongs to me, if they've been assigned to me, or if they're just trying to attach themselves to me just because, oh, that's Dr. Tierney. Oh, I want to get to know her. I want to know who she with because then whoever she with, then I have access to who they're with. And those are not the type of relationships that you want to be forging. So you absolutely positively have to take a look at your circle and see who you are a that want to just be attached to you or who's assigned to you and understand that somebody that might have been assigned to you in one season might only be attached to you in this new season so you have to again make sure just because they've been in your life for 10 15 20 years that don't mean that they're supposed to stay for this new level for this new journey that you're going into Mm, absolutely true and this is where i bring in pastor jt because we often get confused in the faith-based community when we talk about who's assigned to us and who's attached to us. Talk to us about that for a moment so that we can help our audience, those that are, are watching who are people of faith. Oftentimes they value what we say and how we say it. And oftentimes we can't get it because of the messenger. So I'm asking you if you can help us identify and kind of ascertain who's assigned and who's attached. Right. <clears throat> One of the things that I will say is it's dangerous when you are kind of like Stacy said, a nurturer. If you're in the faith based space, we really feel what we believe, like we should be people of charity. We should lend ourselves. And I got that. But one of the most dangerous things that you can do is live based on your assumption. And that's not God's assignment. And so typically what we do is we assume that we're supposed to be all of these things for all of these people. And it's easy for us not to have people attached to us, but it's easy for us to go and grab people like we're putting them in our basket. So we are making them become our project. So they didn't even ask for our help, but we're going to go give it and give them sometimes unsolicited advice. And I will even take it a step further. And this may help somebody going into the new year. 
don't assume that just because they have your last name that mm. that is also your assignment. Mm -hmm. I think that there are a lot of times that we put a lot of unnecessary things on our plate. And I'm going to be honest with you and just going on to say it. There are some times that our self-worth is attached to their storms. So we feel like if we are not serving as their raft or we are not bringing somebody an umbrella, then we don't have any value. But I need you, if you're listening to me, to understand if you have given everybody else a raft, when your storm comes, you're going to be drowning in the thing that you were prepared to walk over or ride over, but you have given all of you to other people. Kind of like what Jesus said. So I want to take it back full circle since I am the resident theologian. We always say, what would Jesus do? And so many of us, we know church and we don't know Christ. Mm. There's a whole bunch of things that we do under the guise of what religion tells us we should do, that Jesus is in heaven. Like, man, why y'all even worried? I'm not even worried about that. Why y'all worried about that? Jesus told us about the danger of casting your pearls before swine. There are two sides to that coin. The first side is, is you are casting your pearls to somebody that one can't even understand the value of it. So if they can't understand the value of it, they're not going to absorb it the way you think that it should, which is now going to leave you with a guilty feeling. Are you going to be upset and frustrated that they did not apply the value that you gave to them or the pearls that you gave them? But this is the second. Oh, OK, let me add on to that, because sometimes we give people pearls out of season. Mm -hmm. It's almost like if you have a six month old baby, why would you give a six month old baby? a book that teaches them how to drive and they don't even know how to walk. We are now forcing people to take on information or take on our pearls when they are not even ready. They haven't even graduated to the place where they can handle cubic zirconia, let alone a pearl. But this is the most important thing. If we continue to cast our pearls before swine, when somebody really needs our pearly wisdom, we're going to be empty and we're not going to have anything to give. So I think coming from that religious standpoint, I would say, take it from Jesus. Jesus walked out of his own neighborhood and the Bible said he walked away sorrowful because he saw that there was a need in the community and he had the power. He was the juice. He was the juice man. <laughs> but because they didn't believe he had to shake the dust off of his feet and move on and go to a group of people that wanted what he had. So before you get bogged down and putting your feet in dusty situations and the rain comes and that dust now becomes mud and you get cemented in a place and in a season and in a village around people who are draining from you rather than pouring into you, shake that dust off your feet and walk according to your assignment and not your assumption. I think that those are very clear indications of what both of you are saying as to why we need to stay focused on who we are so that we know where we're going and who we're taking with us. Dr. Tierney. I want to highlight something that my brother just said, and I want to make sure everybody heard this when he said about the people that having your last name may not be, you know, the people that you are assigned to. Oftentimes we get tripped up in this whole thing of, the people that are attached to us or the people that are assigned to us, because we think that just because we have the same last name, we come from the same background, we look alike, sound alike, et cetera, et cetera, then of course you're assigned to me. But honestly, I can tell you the people that have been truly assigned to me, they haven't, they don't look like me, they don't share my history, but they share my destiny. Where you are going may not look like what you think you're going. And so God will send you people that are completely different from anything that you're used to. They may not look like you. They may have a completely different last name than you. They may not vote like you. They may have a different skin color, a different background, be from a completely different country. But oftentimes we'll miss that because they're so different. Not recognizing that those are the people that are assigned to you. Those are the iron sharpeners that's going to help you get to your destiny. So don't overlook your assignment and the people that are assigned to you because you're you're judging the people based on your history. OK, the people that may share history with you may not share destiny with you. It's very interesting. And, and I definitely want to applaud you both for laying that foundation to help us identify and understand how that can look. And I want to ask 
Charlotte Avery, <laughs> as well as Stacy, this question, because when it comes to our children, there's a level of disillusionment about who is attached to you and who is assigned to you. And, you know, just before we rounded out, you know, 2022, we had a series of deaths among people who were considered friends. How are you helping children establish that baseline that everyone is not your friend and should not be assigned to you or attached to you? I'm going to start with Charlotte. So, you know, with me and having children in so many different age groups and all of that, you know, we deal with the friend group thing and, you know, and I, I always, one thing that I tell my kids, especially when they're going through like friendship drama or whatever, you know, I say, you know, the Bible says, you know, that there's a time and a season, you know, for everything. And I'm like, you know, this person in your life, you know, they may, their season just may be over. Like the reason that they came into your life may have been one thing, but now, their season is over. And so in our household, we have a lot of conversations about seasons and timing of people who are supposed to be in your life versus people who now their, their season is over and they, they need to take the exit route. But I wanna tell you also as a parent, like it's really hard sometimes to say, uh, to differentiate the fact that my child is my child. And so for me, I can say, well, my child is my child. I birthed them, they're my assignment. But here's the thing that I've learned in just my maturity is that there are different there are different stages in their lives where they might not be my assignment. So I say, okay, I'm so proud to have people in my life who I can now turn them over to, and now they become their assignment also. And when I say that, I'm talking about like mentorship and and you know godparents and things like that who can have a better voice and a bigger voice or a bigger impact than I can because I'm your mom. I don't know anything. So sometimes as parents, we have to decide, okay. I'm not doing well with my assignment here. So I'm so glad to have people that I'm gifted and that we're gifted to that I can turn them over to be their assignment. And as a parent, you have to know when you have where that boundary lies and when you need to let go. Mm. So, <laughs> you know, this brings us to a great point. And I'm gonna take a break here because when we come back, I wanna talk to Stacey Owens about that for a moment because that level of disillusionment as it relates to who are our friend groups is important when we talk about how we're preparing our children for the future, when we're back after the break. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Welcome back everyone to A Balanced Life. And we ended our last block talking about who's assigned to us, who's attached to us and who we're with. But a part of that is this disillusionment of who are our friends? How do we select them? How do we release them? And Stacy, you being an educator and running schools, how do you as an educator help draw the line or help our children establish a baseline for who's a friend and who is not? Wow, that's a loaded question because, you know, kids, when you start talking about season, reason, lifetime, right? That's what we all 
sort of base our categorizing of how people are attached to us and knowing when to let go, knowing that they're just here for this reason and all that. That sounds good as an adult. But a lot of children, you know, they're at that basic level of understanding of friendship. They just want somebody to play with. They just want somebody to talk with. They just want someone, you know, to interact with. And a lot of times the biggest argument on the playground is today we're best friends until we say something that we don't agree with each other. And then now we hate each other and we're not friends. And, and we go through this dispute and then before lunchtime, we're back friends again. And then the adults that are attached to us start trying to manage that for them and oftentimes make it worse because you don't know, like they're just mad for this moment. Like if you give them a moment to talk it out, they're gonna be fine you know, a couple of hours later because kids just want to socialize. So mm -hmm. it is so difficult teaching children to understand the attachment and alignment. So what we like to tell them is, you know, go to your emotional intelligence, your emotional sense. What feels good to you? I want to be around someone that's going to bring me joy, that we can engage with each other. We're not arguing all the time. If you're in a sad, mad, unhappy space a lot with this friend, then let that person still be your associate. I, I teach kids early to identify, use words associate, like associates, like that's your associate. That's not a friend. You don't know them well enough mm -hmm. to be your friend. So get some meaning to defining those levels of friendship. Here's my associate, someone that I interact with, right? Um, start with that leveling and, and teaching them how to differentiate those different levels of engagement with people. And then when you're with someone who's bringing you lots of joy, continue to be with them. When you find yourself with people who you're fussing with, they're, they're, they're hurting you or they're bringing you those low vibrations, let them still be your associate, but go find another group. Start mm -hmm. identifying who you can attach yourself to that's like-minded that's doing the things that you enjoy, that's not making you make decisions that you, your gut is telling you not to do, but you're trying to do it just because of them. I think if we started at basic level with kids, that usually helps. Now, when I start moving to my personal kids, see, those jokers are a little older now, right? So now, <laughs> now they're young adults. Now, you know, they're calling and they're saying, mom, this hurt, this partnership, this happened, this happened. Now I'm like, okay, now you need to realize that person isn't assigned to you. A person that's assigned to you, they're going to come in, just like Dr. Tierney said, they're going to help, you know, propel you to your next level. They're going to talk like you. They're going to be purpose driven like you. Your language is going to be the same. They're going to be bringing things that you know, like, how did you even know that about me? How did you even know that was a need of mine? God has placed every person in my life that was an assignment for me. I knew they were an assignment because they were coming to me and telling me stuff that no one that I that I was dealing with. I was dealing with this thing and I needed an answer. And oftentimes they were bringing me the answer. And I knew that we were. It was like a give and take in the relationship. I was giving and taking, and we were both progressive. Right. And I figured out those people who were just attached. I have to tell my daughter all the time, that's those are people who just take from you. So can you recognize when it's a one sided relationship? They're attached to you because it's something that you need and it's OK. But, you know, we often fall out of love with ourselves when those people who are attached to us fall off. And then we start thinking it's our fault that they fell off. And it's the hardest thing to teach my adult kids. Like, you know, their season with you is just over. You yeah. don't have to say it's anything that you did wrong or or whatever. You just have to recognize, well I, well, I hope they got what they got before they left because now that's over. So, yeah, I think with kids, just keep it simple. And with young adults, start putting the whole purpose to it. You know, that makes sense. Can I add one thing to that too? Sure. Um, if, it, if it's okay. I think too, for young people, especially when they've been in relationships or friendships with, in so, for so, I'm sorry, for such a long period of time, you know, sometimes our children can feel like, well, if I leave this group of friends or I'm no longer friends with this particular person, that I'm abandoning them. Well, I don't really think it's, you know, I don't, I try to make my children understand it's not abandonment as much as it, as, as much as it's necessary for your self-preservation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the reality of it is, is, you know, sometimes people want us to stay in relationship with them for attachment when it's really hurting us. And so, you know, it's hard sometimes to to help your children look at, you know, you're not abandoning this person. But what you're doing is 
self-preservation for yourself. And so just teaching them those lessons of knowing the difference, because that can even be hard for us as adults. So imagine how hard that is for, you know, elementary school kids and hormonal um, middle schoolers and then the high school is on a whole nother playing field. So <laughs> well, absolutely. You know, those three areas that you just mentioned, Charlotte, are that directionality that I don't think sometimes we put a comma or a period in as adults in their space because we have playground friends. We have bus rider friends. We have walk home with friends. We have friends from cheer, friends from sports and athletics. Mm -hmm. And so all of these people play different roles in our lives. And so oftentimes we do forget that you are just there because we are attached, if you will, because of our activity. We are attached because we make good grades and we're all in honor society together or we all cheer together. But the reality mm -hmm. is you wouldn't be someone that I would go to lunch with. You wouldn't be someone necessarily, you know, that I would hang out with after school. And so I think that helping children, young adults and adults identify the difference in how these relationships work can help us also determine how to ease out of those things that seemingly hurt us because we weren't really clear on the boundaries associated with mm -hmm. that relationship. So when we think about those things related to relationships and how we ease out of them, coming into 2023, there are some people we need to leave behind. And so I'm going to ask each of you, rather than citing a person, what character traits or personalities have you left in 2022 and just are not going to deal with in 2023? I'm going to start with Dr. Tierney. Not necessarily who you with, but who you leave behind. <laughs> um, I would have to say selfish people. And I'm not saying selfishness from the terms of like not sharing their things or their possessions, but emotionally selfish people, you know, um, mentally selfish people. Anytime we get on the phone, we're only talking about you and what's going on with you. And you don't have the capacity to be compassionate, a sympathetic, empathetic, um, to stand with me in my situations because everything has to be about what's happening, you know, with you. These are often people also that when you talk to them, every, oh girl, let me tell you what's going on now. And this was happening and it's like, oh, <laughs> and it's draining because it's draining everything out of you because the relationship is not reciprocal. Um, because it's it's very one sided in that in that emotional mental you know space and they're not able to be supportive because they're they're very selfish and they may not realize it they may not know but though that's who I'm leaving um, in in back there they can't go in 2023 I got to on my plate and yeah mm -mm, we can't do that absolutely Pastor JT I would say non-believers and i'm not talking about from a religious standpoint mm -hmm. uh, because as you all know all of the work that i do in the spaces that i float in i'm with some people who don't believe the way that i believe and they are some genuinely great people but i'm talking about non-believers those that are pessimistic that have no vision that aren't believing for better mm -hmm. i'm only rocking with people who are believing for better, going after better, because I think going full circle and going back to who you with, there is a statement, I believe Jim Rohn said this, check your circle, check the five people that you are with. And if you're around five non-believers, you're going to be number six. I'm only going to attach myself with people that believe like I believe, because then now when we sit and we have those conversations, we ain't draining. We're trying to find ways to pour into each other. So non-believers, 2022, I'm done with them. <laughs> Charlotte Avery. I am leaving behind people who are takers. Um, people who don't know how to, you know, like Dr. Tierney said, you know, that they don't know how to share or play well in the sandbox, you know, because for me, I'm a very giving person of time, of information, of resources, you know, of money and things like that. And, you know, people who are just takers, they are not my favorite people. And so I'm just leaving them behind. If they're, you know, like Dr. Tierney said, if they're energy drainers and, and time drainers and they're making me feel, 
you know, they always want, want, want from me, or they always want me to share a resource that I have, you know, because of attachment instead of, you know, assignment or anything like that. I, I'm, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for people who are takers. I just, I don't, I don't do well with people like that because I'm not like that. I wasn't raised like that, but yet, you know, people who are takers are, you know, they're like, magnets to people who are givers. And so for me, it's really asking myself, okay, and asking God, okay, th is this person a friend, a foe, or taker? And to let them stay right where they are. I'm not taking takers with me into 2023. Mm, absolutely. Stacy. <laughs> I'm leaving them ungrateful jokers behind because they make my brain It's a <laughs> when you're ungrateful, you know, you got your blessings going on and you don't even see it. And then everything with you is just a problem. You're not thankful for the small things. You're always complaining and just don't no ever find the good in what you're doing. So if, if we start to lead with gratitude and learn to be thankful for everything, even the small thing, if you don't have your bill money today because you just spent it all on your on your Christmas and now you're in January struggling, just be thankful that you still got the job. Don't come telling me about all the things that you knew that you shouldn't have done for Christmas. So <laughs> grateful people, they you, take your, your vibration to a low level. So I'm looking for people who can find all the things to be thankful for because the more gratitude you give out, the more things that come to you so that you can be thankful about. So if you don't want them to be selfish and takers and all that other stuff, let's start teaching them how to just be thankful. Did you hear her little hoop in her voice? <laughs> Y'all heard her little hoop. She was she was yeah. about to go in. I heard it. I heard it. Pastor JT, she might say to run for your money. money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, thank you everybody, because we're in this space and in this season moving seamlessly right now into 2023, you know, with being understandable in our way in which we approach the things that we do. When we come back after the break, I'll give my reflection. hatred on the streets, a horrific scene, a white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. White people are losing their damn minds. As an angry pro-Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol, we've seen We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage as a backlash. This is the rise of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. Here's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear. Welcome back everyone to A Balanced Life. And as you can tell, there are so many ways for us to approach walking into 2023. We're here now. We have crossed over that mark and we want to leave our mark in this new season of our lives. But a part of being able to do that is establishing some ground rules about who we're gonna play with and who we're not gonna play with in the new season. I literally saw a meme the other day and it literally summed me up so well. I'm not difficult to deal with, I'm just not easy to play with. And I want people to know that about me because I come from a place of good intention. And so as I move into this new year and into this space, I want to be surrounded by people who value themselves, who value other people, who know how to walk in love, walk in kindness, who can put foolishness to the side so that we can accomplish great things together. I hope that you have heard something today on our show, A Balanced Life, where you're saying, I've got some new tools in my toolkit. I've got more things that I can load in my arsenal that will allow me to thrive and survive. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye now. <laughs>